and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Jules, your co-host. If you're new to this type of work, please start with episode one. If you're an intermediate, please start with episode 98. And if you're advanced, fast forward to episode 200. With me, as always, to share her insights and her wisdom is the spirit doctor herself, Kelly Sparta. Hi, Hi. Kelly. Hello. How are we doing today? Oh, I'm tired. You're tired. tired. You posted the funniest TikTok (laughs) yesterday. Oh, my God. Now, I know we're recording. You know, when this comes out, it's going to be like February the 11th. So y'all going to have to back up to, you know, January. Yeah. But January y'all go look on when it came out. Yes. So. Okay. January 24th. Y'all go look on her TikTok or I don't know if it keeps it or whatever, but put it y'all, on this was, too, so this was the funniest flipping thing. She goes to sleep. She wakes up from what's supposed to be a nap. Her husband wakes her up because she's been sleeping for like two hours straight. And she's like, what do you mean it's eight o'clock? It can't be eight o'clock. There's no sunlight. Then she sends me a text, meaning it to go to her assistant, and I'm like, I have no clue what you're talking about. She's like, oh, my bad. That's supposed to go to Heather instead, not you. I'm like, thank God, because it was not going to get done. (laughs) So that was the funniest thing you put out. And then I sent her the TikTok as an exam to explain to her why she got that weird message. (laughs) I'm like, "Mm, brain no worky. Uh." So, so she t- so she, <laughs> yeah, and you so you laid down, y'all. This is how tired this woman is, right? She laid down at five in the afternoon, woke up at seven ish or eight. eight. Okay, he told three me hours. It was two hours, but it was three. It's a three three hour nap. A three, a three hour, hour nap. nap. Which is why I was waking up, going, "Oh no, it's morning, right?" <laughs> If you're waking me up and saying it's 8 o'clock, it's supposed to be morning. It can't possibly be 8 o'clock. There's no sunlight. The sun comes up here at 6.30 every morning. Why are you waking me up and telling me it's 8 8 a.m.? And he's like, no, it's 8 p.m., honey. (laughs) Like, wake me up at 8 (laughs) p.m. So confused. (laughs) See, he missed the perfect opportunity to – please tell him I said this. He missed the perfect opportunity to go, honey – we jump dimensions and just no, totally no. fuck with you. <laughs> we're we're in the the so the Oracle Blue realm of Nimrod. I don't even know what that was, but <laughs> Nimrod. Oh my god, that would have been so bad. <laughs> been so bad. Oh my god. Thankfully, my husband is much more compassionate than you are. <laughs> I'll remember what that I would have done. And I are finally in physical space together. <laughs> like, hey, if if something ain't right, Jules probably fucking with me. Yeah. <laughs> or if there's no sunlight, no, no, honey, baby, it's it's eight o'clock the next day. You slept an entire day. Wait, what? And then what? she'd do the freak out. <laughs> he should have just let me sleep, except that I still have my contacts in, so he couldn't do that you know oh my gosh but yeah it was not good i was i was very disoriented (laughs) and this is coming from me who i have slept 22 hours straight yeah yes i I don't i didn't have a reason to sleep 22 hours but you know i think i probably could have yesterday because (laughs) i i was only up for another three two three hours after that and then went back to sleep and then woke up like nine hours later and was still tired so (laughs) It's like, I don't know what's going on, but it's not like I've been pushing too hard. I really haven't. It's just, I was just toast. I was like, the quarterback is toast. Yeah, yes. I'm just done. And for those who didn't get that, that is a diehard reference. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. <laughs> which which leads in a perfect, you know, segue into what we're talking about today on this I'm so flipping exhausted day because we're talking about what kids motivation. Yes. Yeah. How do you get it and keep it? Well, you know, there we go. We've got this thing. And you know, yeah, we're right now when we're recording this is the uh is the the full moon in Leo, which you're supposed to be setting your intentions for the coming year, and I'm like my intention is to sleep. <laughs> oh God, right? Yeah. Instead of raw, we're more yeah. like be like 
Yeah. The lion got his belly full and went to sleep. That's it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that. So, yeah, full belly sleeping lion. That sounds awesome to me right now. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's talk okay. about full belly and going to sleep. Yeah, there you go. All right. So let's let's get into the topic because you know this is this is one of those things that is a double edged sword. Okay. Nice hair. Okay. I did well. It's so long <laughs> right now, and it's just wanting to stick up. I mean, it normally sticks up, but it's just I was ridiculous say, right now. I'm like it's just sticking up because it sticks up. <laughs> you, you you train it to do that shit, man. Yes, Why I are do. You complaining about it. <laughs> I don't understand. Because <laughs> I'm like I'm like the Fonz. It's like there's. Hair number 452 is out of place. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, and I'll shut up like now. Three quarters of our audience did not get that reference at all. But I did. Y'all That's need to go matters. watch Happy Days. Yeah. Just, yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay, now I got to say it. So, funny, fun fact is that there is a phrase in uh, syndication TV or in, um, you know, uh, what do they call that? Serial TV, I don't know, whatever. Um, there is a phrase in the TV world that it, when you go off the rails in the in, with a show, they call it jumping the shark. And they call it that because of the Happy Days episode where Fonzie was on water skis and jumped over a shark. And jumped the shark, yes. Right. They, they call it jumping the shark. Jumping and the so, shark, I love it. Yeah, and, and so that that episode became iconic in the world. And what's really funny is if you're a supernatural fan, they actually did an episode of supernatural that was called jump the shark or jumping the shark, something like that. And it was the episode where they went to the, the convention that was all about them. And they met the guy who was writing the book about them. And they interacted with people who were playing them and you oh, know that's fun it, it, yeah it's, it was very self-referential and the guy turned out to be a prophet and you know they they just it was very very funny but it was it was so self-referential and the whole show has become camp in the you know years like 10 on um but yeah it was it was hysterical i, I the moment i saw the title i started laughing yeah i was like oh this is gonna be good right <laughs> Yeah, I understood the reference. So now you guys are are now educated, and there you go. So there you go. Um, so let's talk about motivation. How do you how do you get and keep it? So the the first thing I'm gonna say is that if you're motivated or if you're burned out, you're not gonna be motivated, and there you shouldn't make the goal motivation. Okay, because. The people I hear talking about needing motivation the most are the ones who are crispy crittered the most. They're just fried. And they're like, I need motivation to do this. No, you need to lay your ass down and be broccoli. Vegetate on the ground until you have energy. And then vegetate some more until you feel inspired. And then vegetate some more until you feel both inspired and you have energy and then you will be motivated. Okay. We, we, we spend so much of our lives pushing through the overwhelm, the exhaustion, the, you know, I don't want to, the, uh, you know, we push through. And if you are in the energy of pushing, you are not doing it right. If you're pushing, you are fried or on the edge of fried, most likely you're probably crispy because, you know, this takes practice. And so, you know, I remember, I, I, I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, but mm -hmm. it's, it's critical factor right now, which is 20 some years ago, I went to the doctor and I told her what my, my year had been like. And she said, Oh my God, if I could send you to write you a one month prescription to Canyon Ranch, which is a very high end, you know, spa and resort retreat space. Right. She said, if I could write you a one month prescription for it, I would right now. And I just looked at her like she had lost her fucking mind. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm fine. You know, this is my life. My life is always like this. And she's like, two months. And I was like, what? And I, I literally told her she was crazy 
because this is just how my life is and I'm used to it and it's fine. I had it's no fine. idea how fried I was. No clue because I had no point of reference for being unfried. Well, because we're control freaks. We are not going to allow someone else to take over our fryingness. I'm going to well, crispy fry myself. It's, it's <laughs> not even that. It's I literally didn't know what I would do with myself if I wasn't doing mm -hmm. that. Right. You know, I was like, well, what are you talking about? Right now? Ironically, ironically, this was like 2001. Okay. Okay. And ironically, a few months later, spirit sent me on walkabout <laughs> where the first part of walkabout was a month of me doing nothing. I literally did nothing. Universe I, I goes, hold up. I got a prescription pad. That's right. They're like, hold my beer. We'll make it work. <laughs> so it's been a They're month. Like, I doing see nothing. what you're doing, doctor. Yeah. And then I spent the next year on walkabout living in other people's houses and traveling and whatever, but not actually working. I wasn't working at all. I was living on 350 bucks a month of unemployment insurance and the kindness of strangers. And that was it. I was not working. So I took an entire freaking year off, right? <laughs> mm. But I was fine, right? It took me a month. It, the, that first month, the entire month, I would every 30 to 50 seconds, I would go, I should be, I should be, I should be. And I didn't know what I should be doing, but my whole body was like, I should be doing something. And mm -hmm. I kept going, nope, I don't have anything to do. I don't know what I'm getting all excited about, right? I had uh, I had been working for a company that, that closed down, which is how I got the unemployment insurance. And I didn't have anything else to do. And I knew that I was going to this festival shortly thereafter. And so I wasn't doing anything on purpose because there was no point in getting a new job when I was going to go to this festival for a week. And I felt really clear that I wasn't coming back. And so, oh, you know, after the festival and I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, so there's, there was no point in going and getting another job because I was just going to leave. And I had a, I uh, had a part-time gig for a medium at the time. And so, you know, I worked for him every now and again, and I got a little extra cash that way and whatever. And, but Yeah. But I was constantly like, I should be, I should be. My my nervous system was on such overload from the previous yeah. years. That That's what I you're used not. to. Yeah. Yeah. I burned out in 90, 93 um, when I was selling real estate, 93, 94. And I never recovered from it and until mm. you know, 10 years later, I'm, I'm on a walkabout in 2002. So nine years later, whatever. And so, you know. I just didn't have a point of reference for not being burned out. And so, yeah. So if you're unmotivated, the first question you need to ask yourself is, are you fried? Right? Because <laughs> you may not know it. Lord knows I didn't. If every time you lie down, you go, I should be, you're probably fried. Okay. Okay. Now, you know, did you have yeah. did you have other people other than the doctor who told you take off a month or two and all that? Did you have like close friends, family, whatever, telling you, dude, you're kind of burnt out right now? No. Did, did any observations that were that you were like poo poo is fine? Not that and, I can and remember. I, okay, I asked that because uh, Mitch is very good about. He's like, uh uh, you you you're you're. I can tell. I'm like, you can tell what? He's like. You're doing too much. You're burnt out. I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, your patience is non-existent right now. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's the check. I was like, yeah, you, you're, you're right. I hate yeah. it when he's right. But <laughs> yeah, you're right. I Let alone, oh, my yeah. God. Let alone we go to the to the psychic lady who, who or medium lady who talks to dead people, right? Gives him a reading. And she's like, yeah, looks at me. He's like, he's. Yeah, he's really in tune. He's he's usually not wrong. And I'm like, you had to say that out loud in front of him. So, yeah. Anyway, I digress. We're all but, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, he's so I was wondering if, you know, 
other listeners, you know, if they have people, you know, saying you look tired or are you okay you looked a little stressed or Ooh, where's that energy coming from you know that's the that energy we yeah the only exude. time i can remember having that sort of feedback specifically from friends was when i was 19 and i accidentally ended up running a payroll company that a friend of mine owned when she was on an early version of prozac and lost her mind and disappeared and abandoned me to be running the company. And the woman who was my assistant was 35 and I was 19. And uh, <clears throat> so I would be going about my day and she would look at me and say, would you like a cup of tea? And that became her code for you're being a raving lunatic bitch. Why don't you sit down and have a cup of tea in the corner and stop bothering me? <laughs> and I, I, I started to recognize that that was the case. And I would say, Mary, do I need a cup of tea? And she's like, yeah, you really need yes. a cup of tea. And I'm like, okay, I will take a cup of tea and I will go behave myself in the corner for a bit. She's like, oh, nice. Okay, good. <laughs> she would bring me a cup of tea See, that's and awesome. banish me to my office. Right. It was just like, but that is a true friend that will do that and not tell you what you want to hear, but will tell you the truth. We all need friends like that friends she well, was she was yeah. managing me she was managing okay. us and she was doing it effectively yeah. so but yeah there we you were go. not friends but she was she was very good at managing me so um there you go but yeah that's the only time i can think of where somebody looked at me and said you're you're fried right um okay. i at the time that all of this stuff was happening i was living in the magical house and pretty much everybody in the magical house had their own issues around this sort of stuff. They were all overachievers. You know, one of them was a former special forces guy. So, you know, he's not going to look at me and say, you're burned out. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't do that in the special forces. You just pow power through and, and, you know, power get out through the other side because there's no, it's often life or death. Right. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So no, nobody said that to me. Okay. But my doctor was like, that was a Eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You're just pansy. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. But I need big girl panties. You know, I was heavy into my warrior self, right? And there's a reason I took the name Sparta when I got divorced in 98. It's like I was heavily into my warrior self. And I'm like, nah, I can do it. I'm good. You know? <sighs> you know? Yeah. So these These are not kind things that we do to ourselves, right? So... So, you know, if you're not motivated, check your burnout quotient. Let's talk about the, you know, that's, that's step one. Step two, if you're not motivated, check why you're not motivated. Is this actually your goal or someone else's goal? Because if it's not your goal, you're not going to be motivated. And that's okay. Doesn't have to be, yeah, you, you know. If you're not actually participating in the goal, then you're probably not going to be motivated to complete it. And so the question you have to ask yourself is, you know, do I have buy-in on this goal? And if you don't, then why are you involved? Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you need to be involved, like your partner is super engaged in this and requires you to do this one small piece in order for them to have their bigger piece and you're doing this for them out of love, then you will tap into your love for your partner as your motivation, not your desire to do the thing. Yeah. Okay. Because that's what you're invested in is your love for your partner and your desire to support your partner. And so you invest in your desire to support your partner, not in the activity that you are not invested in that's how you get the motivation yeah. there right and, and if you're not engaged if you're not excited then don't freaking do it right and, yeah that energy as far as the love for your partner very different energy than i am expected to do blah right or let's just pretend mom and dad want me to be a doctor Right. I have no motivation to go be a doctor. I want to be a professional singer. I'm making it up, but, you know, or whatever, or an accountant, God forbid, you know. And so, you know, 
It's like, what are you going to be at? What are you going to do? Work for the IRS? No, you're going to be a doctor. No, I have no motivation to do that. So that kind of goes into another topic that we've also talked about, which is do we live by our rules and our definitions of things or someone else's right. definition of who, what, when, where we should be? Correct. And then the the third piece is if you are if you do want the thing and it's for you the other piece that happens to get in the way of motivation is that we will often we we're at the bottom of our own priority list right if you're at the bottom of your own priority list and there is that means there's always somebody else ahead of you there's always something else that's more important or someone else who needs something more or whatever and if you remain at the bottom of your own priority list, you will never have the motivation to do the thing that you really want to do because you get all the leftovers and there are never freaking leftovers, right? And so the the piece of the puzzle there is not about, um, it's not about motivation, it's about priority. And so when you reverse your priority list and you make yourself first and you do the things important to you first and then do for others out of your leftovers, then you find the motivation to do the things you want to do because you haven't hit the end of your day or the end of your work day or, you know, the end of whatever, and you have no energy left. And this is the other piece is that I, I often see people put 100% of effort into their jobs. But you're awake for 16 hours a day and you work for eight. That means 50% of your effort should go towards your job. And the other 50% of your effort is for your life. Right? And if you're spending 100% of your effort on your job, you got nothing left for your life. Okay? So big surprise, you're not motivated. Interesting. Right? So... You got to, it's, it's energy management in that scenario, right? It's, we call a lot of things motivation that aren't motivation, right? Motivation is desire. If you have the desire for something, then you will pursue it in the absence of things that suck all your life out of your beingness, right? And the absence of things that are, um, uh, pulling your energy. The exception to that is if you don't know how to do it, in which case the, there is a, some, some of us have learned helplessness around not knowing how. And what do you mean by that? So if every time you tried to do something as a child, you got chastised for being, doing it wrong, you will learn not to try. And so that becomes learned helplessness. It's, it, then, then you just do what you're told and you just respond, you know, to whatever you're told to do and you do nothing more or less than what you're told. That is learned helplessness. And that can actually impact you later in life because now you're just doing what you're told. Well, what if you want to do something for yourself and nobody's there to tell you what to do? Now you you don't know how to do it because you've had the problem solving, experimental, creative part of your being beaten out of you early in life. And so now you have to re-engage and learn how to do that again. Right? Would that be the same type of thing, little different scenario, if you had someone, say like like helicopter mom or whatever, mm -hmm. like that's always doing stuff for you. Yes. So you don't learn literally you're never given the opportunity to do anything for yourself, to think yeah. for yourself, to problem solve for yourself. Correct. Both of those okay. scenarios end up with the same result. Okay. And so, you know, and, and if you're on an in burnout or if you've just given away all your energy for the day, you will end up in a place where you're like, well, I don't know how to do that. I want this, but I don't know how to do it. And then, it, then your, your dream, your goals become dreams and dreams are, it would be nice if, wouldn't it be great if, if you say those words, that is that whatever comes after if is never fucking going to happen. Okay. That is, that is the definition of it'll never happen. Wouldn't it be nice mm -hmm. if, wouldn't it be nice if I won the lottery, right? <laughs> that, 
that's that's the sort of thing, right? It's like nobody mm -hmm. expects it to actually happen, right? And that's what happens is you relegate it to a dream instead of a goal, and therefore you don't you don't put any effort into it because it's just a dream, it's not a goal. Right? So a lot of times it's about making it real. So for a long time, I wanted to travel internationally. And I had this vision in college, you know, I wanted to go for a gap year in and hike a backpack across Europe. That's what I wanted to do in between high school and college. And I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I went to college because mom said that her whole life was dependent upon seeing me graduate from college. And so it was either go to college or invalidate my mother's existence. And so I went to college because I was a good daughter. And then I spent the entirety of my freshman year of college being miserable and unhappy because I wanted to be backpacking Europe. And I spent a lot of time in one of my professor's office hours whining about it. <laughs> he was a very kind man. Um, and, uh, in my head, all of that whining built up to, I don't have permission to go to Europe, even though I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until my husband, when I got married, when I was 21, my husband had been to Europe many times and he's like, let's go to Europe for our mm -hmm. honeymoon. And I was like, that's allowed. Right. In my head, it was like, it's allowed. Yeah. I want to, I want to go to Europe. I've always wanted to go to Europe. I want to do that. Da, da, da. But I was terrified because it wasn't allowed, right? But he made mm -hmm. it happen and I went along for the ride and it still took me two or three more trips around different places that I went for me to get over the idea that I wasn't allowed to travel the way I wanted to. Yeah, right? allowed. And allowed, right? <laughs> yeah. Despite the fact that it was my choice that I made, that I did, and da, 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 it didn't matter, right? So the... The upshot, though, is that sometimes we put things in our own way, right? And so, um, and then the other piece is that sometimes we don't think that there's a possibility to be able to change it. We don't even conceive of the possibility of changing. We're so used to just accepting what we get, which is usually scraps, that we don't say this isn't, we, we may say I'm not happy, but we won't do anything to change it because we don't conceive of the idea that it's changeable because we've always gotten scraps. We'll always get scraps. Right. And you're being selfish. Right. If you want anything. Yes. Yeah. You're being, being selfish. selfish. If you want anything, by the way, if anybody who says that you're selfish, if you want anything is manipulating you and trying to steal your power. So tell them to fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. I had a conversation with some people yesterday who said that about the Mormon church. So they were like, yeah, you're Do not what? allowed to want anything. They they said that they weren't allowed to want anything in the church and that if they did, that they were bad. So um, they were uh, both okay. in the Mormon church. I don't know. Okay. Okay. But that was their, their experience. So hi guys. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I know they listen. Okay. Um, so, you know, yeah. but this is, this is, it can I didn't be, know that. I'll learn you know, something new. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I've I've heard Christians say that too. You know, it's like, oh, you should be doing for others. It's better to give than to receive. You know, it's it's sort of inherent in a lot of religions, right? And different yeah. churches approach it differently. Some churches are hard, okay. harder core about it, and some are lesser hardcore about it. You know, this is why we have so many different denominations of different things. But, um, you know, it just I've. It, the the it's better to give than to receive is the mm -hmm. equivalent of you shouldn't want anything for yourself. You shouldn't want. Right? Yeah. It is the exact same thing. Right. So, you know, it, it is, there's a lot of re religious trauma around it. So, but the point being that sometimes you got to give yourself permission to have what it is that you want and to fight for it. Right. Because you can't give up just because something got hard. Right. Mm -mm. And this is the other piece that I see, especially when people are becoming spiritual practitioners, right? Is that they'll, they'll put together whatever it is they want to offer and then they'll put it out in the world. They'll give it a week and a half, maybe two weeks to be successful, wildly successful. And if it isn't, then they go, oh, the universe didn't, I'm, I'm going in the wrong direction. The universe isn't supporting me. Therefore, this isn't the right thing to do. 
And it's okay. like, you no, know, the universe wants what you want. You didn't give it enough time. <laughs> you, you, you had this fantasy notion that it would be wildly successful if the universe was supportive of it. And if it wasn't, then this isn't meant to be. It's like, no, that's not how this works, right? You have to be committed to a path and then the universe will support your commitment. But if you are throwing something out over here and throwing something out over there and throwing something out over here and doing that over there and never continuing in the same direction for very long, the universe is just going to go, I'll, I'll be over here. You let me know when you decide. Well, I just want to see what sticks. Right. But the problem I'm just gonna is throw the, everything. Universe, the universe is going in all the directions and therefore all of the, your energy is frittered in all the directions. And therefore mm -hmm. you get small results in one direction because 90% of your energy is going in different directions rather than laser focused right. and becoming clear. I yes. remember that's some, uh, what you, yeah. And, and, in manifesting, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly, um, it be very clear about what you want for, you will surely get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you got to commit. And that's mm -hmm. the thing is that people are like, they kind of just like, well, kind of sort of am I, is it okay if I have this maybe, right? That energy is not going to pull you anything. It's going to be like, um, not if you're like that about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you committed to it or not? Because it's your energy that's used in the manifestation. You are the magic. If you're mm -hmm. unclear or uncommitted or unfocused, the magic will be unclear, uncommitted, and unfocused. Yeah, that won't be good. No, you are the magic. So, you know, this is why we do our personal growth work to learn how to expand our energetic work because our beliefs and our assumptions and our fears and our worries and our doubts and our self-doubts and our inner and outer judgments and all this crap gets in the way. And then you're like, but why doesn't my magic work? It's like, well, your magic doesn't work because you're your belief system you are the magic and you are mm -hmm. all bound up inside of yourself with your mental belief structures and you no know, matter so how many you, crystals you have honey <laughs> that's right if you are tied in knots inside the energy doesn't move that's how that works so this is the sort of thing that that we're talking about and this is one of the reasons why we do the welcome to the woo program right it's it helps to un unknot the energy so that you have the oh, ability like to do that. I like that. A yeah. a not, have yourself tied in knots. Come to the welcome to the woo. We right. have punch. <laughs> <laughs> and cookies. Yes. And cookies. <laughs> Come unknot yourself. Come unknot yourself. Yes. Yes. So, but I mean, that's, that's effectively what it is that we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Is, you know, you, you have to shift your perspective. You have to change the way you see yourself, which shifts your identity, which shifts the way you receive things, which opens up the energy. That's how that works. The energy opens when you get unknotted inside. And so this is why we do the two together. This is why we teach you energetics while we do personal growth work with you, because that's, that's, that's how it works. The mm -hmm. less of you that's knotted, the more energy you run. So, you know, there's a reason why I can sit here and go Woof, with energy because I've spent 20 years on knotting myself, right? <laughs> like 25 years. Ah, I'm getting old. But yeah, you know, there's a reason because I've worked my butt off to pull the knots out. Now, is it going to take you 25 years? No, I did the work for you. I shortened the distance so you can do it faster, <laughs> a lot faster than me. Thank God, because that took forever. But, um, you know, this is this is how it works. Right. And then you learn how to do the work. So, um, you know, understanding the concepts and unknotting your insides, put that together and you are a force to be reckoned with. Right. You know, we love being a force to be reckoned with. Oh, but, hell yeah. We're control freaks. Of course we are. Watch me. Baby. <laughs> Watch me go. I got shit to do, right? I got shit. I'm going to manifest motivated. this and this and this. That's right. <laughs> and be motivated. Clear your blocks and and run a bunch of energy. There's there's a great way to be motivated, right? And I'm going to yeah. say, bitch, be gone to all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. So I have time for the drama. <laughs> yeah, we were we were talking about before we got on the call here. We were talking about you know you you were looking at me going you're tired and we're doing a thing on motivation. How are you going to be motivated? <laughs> and I'm like I'm just going to channel the energy. It'll be fine. You know I got I'm not tired right now. Why? Because I'm in it. Right. That's it. I'm in it. So the you know this is the other piece of motivation is just committing. And I didn't come in going, oh, I can't do it. I'm so, I'm so tired. I can't. I can't. I can't. I just, you know, I came in and went, yep, I'm tired. So I'm going to acknowledge where I am. And then I'm going to be yeah. with where I'm committed to going, which is I'm committed to putting out this podcast every week. And so, you know, I put on my big girl panties and I channeled the energy. Right. And I'm not pushing. I want to be clear. I'm not pushing right now. I'm tired but I'm not pushing through the tired. I'm channeling the energy that I need to get through this. And then I'm going to go take care of myself. I'm, this is my, the end of my day and I'm going to go lay down and have a break and, you know, mm -hmm. take the night off. I'm not going to push the through. difference. What's the difference between pushing through? What would be you pushing through versus how you acted or how you reacted today and, and was with the podcast? Yeah. What would question. it be? Great yeah. question. So thank you. I um, heard it. <laughs> if I was pushing through, I would be like, oh, it sucks. And I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to I'm going to push myself. I'm going to push my needs down and ignore them. And I'm going to pull all the extra energy up from my beingness. And I'm going to just power through regardless of how unhappy I am. Okay. That's pushing. Your tone changed. Right? Yeah. I can hear it. Can y'all hear that? Yeah. I swear to God, I can hear it in her in her y'all y'all know what you sound like. Yeah. And it's <laughs> it's it's very authoritative. Right. Instead of like, well, hey, because you are we getting gonna... authoritative with yourself. <gasps> exactly. You're you're like mm -hmm. looking at your inner child who is whining for a nap and saying, No, you don't get a nap. That's exactly it. Right? There will be no naps. We are gonna do this. <laughs> I don't care if you don't like it. That is the inner dynamic of push. I'm laughing because that's me. Yeah. Not all right? the time. It used to be much worse. <laughs> and, you know, I caught myself doing it today. Mm -hmm. Literally, I have like 20 projects. There's only one of me. And I'm like, hold up. <laughs> y'all. Okay. The other thing y'all need to research is those old school, like, take a number things. Right. Right. <laughs> that's like in Beetlejuice whenever yep. he's like, and it comes up like, Serving number four, and he's like 50,245, right? <laughs> right? I'm like, y'all, I'm going to put this one of these things outside my office. That's right. And so I, I got to a point, I'm like, no, I am out of whack. Yeah. We are, t I am taking 30 freaking minutes, and I'm just woo sign and yeah. we just wooing. Yeah. Now, stop it. Right. And I had to, I told myself, I'm like, stop. Right. <sighs> refocus just take 30 minutes and just stop you're not doing this mm -mm. right and i was literally getting and yeah you know i feel it in my shoulders right. like and my body was like because i was trying to hold on and power through and now it's like yep. okay breathe yeah so and that's yeah that's the energy right when you are getting strict and authoritative with your inner <sighs> child then you are in push what i did mm -hmm. today was i acknowledged I'm tired and I'm going to show up because this is important to me, but I'm not going to be abusive to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to show up where I am and I'm going to bring the energy through that I need to bring through, but I'm not pulling it from my reserves. I'm channeling it from spirit. Right. Cause that right? affects your life force, right? Correct. Okay. I'm not, I'm not pulling it up from my reserves and I'm not being abusive to myself. Because if my inner child had been like, no, I really don't want to do this, we would have rescheduled. Mm -hmm. I would have rescheduled. I'm just oh, yeah. tired today. And I've yeah. been tired most of the day. And I had things to do. And that was okay. You mm -hmm. know, I, I'm, I was acknowledging that I'm tired. And every time I didn't have something to do, I did nothing. Because I was being kind to myself. And mm -hmm. if I had needed to do less, I would have canceled things. And I had mm -hmm. ultimate permission in my world to cancel anything I need to cancel in my calendar. And that keeps me from being self-abusive. 
I had to give mm-hmm. myself permission to do that. My integrity wouldn't let me do that for a lot of years. I'd be like, no, I can't cancel on them. What I have discovered is every single time I have canceled something because I was honoring my own energy levels, the mm-hmm. person on the other end was like, oh, absolutely no problem. Or, oh my God, thank God, because I really needed to not do this too, right? Every yep. time. I you and I have done that. anybody be pissed off. Right. We've done that. Right. We've done that. And I'm like, oh, thank God. Because right. I just, I, I got nothing today. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. And, and that happens, right? So, you know, it's about giving yourself permission to cancel if you need to. Right. There you go. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of motivation, it, we think of motivation as being, you know, the, the, the desire to do something. But the vast majority of motivation is self-care. You know, when you take good care of yourself, you will find yourself more motivated to do things. And when you put yourself first, you will find that you have the energy to do things. Mm -hmm. So that's the short and the long of it. And that's my Kellyism for the day. That's a very good Kellyism. I I actually thought I was going to say, I actually thought you were going to say lay like broccoli, but that's okay. (laughs) But that's only for burnout. It doesn't apply for the whole thing. Right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Well, this has oh, been a fun oh, one discussion. One thing before we fill yes. this up is that I, I realized that I've been teasing saying, oh, well, you know, September, October, we're going to do the retreat. No, December, we're going to do the retreat. Well, I looked at the calendar actually, finally, and uh, the retreat is not happening in December because Thanksgiving is the la- last weekend in November and that it just doesn't leave enough time for um in between space between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So we're going to do, um, we're going to do the, what did I say? The ninth or the eighth, eighth, eighth. The eighth to the 14th of November right? of November. Yeah. So I'm we're checking do my calendar the, right now. Eighth to the 14th of November, um, is the plan. I have not confirmed that with the venue yet, but that's currently the plan on my books. Um, the, but the venue said, if I book even two months in advance, they, they said that would be fine. So, um, so the, the 8th to the 14th of November is the plan for the adventures in energetics retreat for beyond beginner level energy workers. And so we will be custom designing the vast majority of the retreat around the attendees. And, uh, there will definitely be a Kundalini awakening. There will definitely be a sound healing. There will definitely be group work. We're going to sing up the sun every morning and we're going to do presence practice. And we're also going to do some, you know, running around, not running around, but, you know, we're, we're going to explore. Running around naked around a campfire? No, they won't let me have a campfire. It's very sad. But <sighs> no, there's a, um, we are going to do some, do a tour uh, and there's hanging bridges and zip lines and all sorts of fun stuff. Ooh, and I love zip lining. Places to, to hike and things like that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And then we're going to hit the indigenous market and the Tuesday market and, you know, see, see stuff. Right. So, um, you know, that'll be, that'll be good. And if you get all excited and you want to take a little extra time, you can also, you're going to have to fly through Panama city to get there. So, uh, there, there is a howler monkey tour there in Panama city. If you decide you want to come early you could do that on your own. And there's also touring the Panama canal, if that's exciting to you. Um, and the beach, there's the beach. We will not be doing beach in the retreat because we're up in the mountains. So you could hit the beach on the way in or the way home, depending on however you want to do it. Cause you got to go through Panama city and there's beach. So, um, yeah, so it's, it, it's going to be kick ass, rocking awesome. Everybody I I've been talking to is like, I want to go to that. I want to go to that. So depending on what happens when I open up registration, I only have 16 beds to sell. So okay. depending on what happens when I open registration, I may end up having to do another one because. Well, so, and this, and yeah. that's really interesting because for this type of work, um, like going through woo you and, and I'm sorry, welcome to the woo. Woo the second square. One. Woo, woo square. square. Jeez. It's, yeah. <laughs> sorry. And then woo you, yeah. um, all the different courses. It's been very intimate. Yeah. So, so. I see this is totally Kelly, just totally very small, intimate groups. Yep. And it's not a big, you know, two, 300 people. Cause why no. you get lost in it. That's right. It's a very different energy. 
Yeah. You know, I'm small not interested intimate in doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I, and, uh, I want to work with people and there's going to be a fair amount of empty space so that people can get to know each other. And so there can be some chill time and, and I'm going to be on site the whole time. So, you know, if you want to like bend my ear and ask me some questions or ask for personal instruction on X, Y, or Z on during the off time, I'm happy to do that. I'm there. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for, you know, individualized attention when you're in that small of a group. So yeah, it's okay. going to be awesome. I'm really excited. And I'll be designing the rest of it around what people's experience is, uh, you know, what the experience level of the people who are coming is and what their interests are. So there'll be a questionnaire when you come in that'll ask you about your experience level and what you have learned to do and what you don't know how to do and, and what you want to learn how to do. And I will base the, the remainder of the plan on people's answers. So... Um, you know, it, you'll have a chance to, to uh, influence what we're doing, which is also cool, right? Very good. So if they're interested, and I know the registration is not open for it yet, no. but if they're interested, they can email you Join at Kelly, at Kelly Spana. It's Kelly well, Spada. Yeah, Kelly Spada. You sound Kelly like you're Spada. in Boston. Boston. I, I, why am I from yeah. Boston all of a sudden? I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, you're channeling my hometown, man. Stop it. Uh, so... Um, but yeah, the, uh, you can email me at kelly at kellysparta.com or you can just go on the website and join the mailing list and uh, the people okay. on the mailing list will get the first notice. Um, and if you're thinking about joining one of the programs, joining sooner than later gets you first dibs on the spaces that we have in the retreat. So, um, you know, I won't, I won't book a second one unless there is an overwhelming amount of people who want to come to the first one. So, um, so, you know, there's no guarantee that there will be a second one, uh, you know, once we start taking registrations. You know, people say they want to come, but when you say, okay, it's time for registrations, you know, we don't know who's actually going to, you know, put their money where their mouth is sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, getting first dibs is always a good choice. So um, those who are in program with me, if they're in one of my programs, any of my programs, they, they get first dibs on the retreat um, and then... The mailing list will get the next list and then um and then the podcast and then the pub public if we ever get there i don't think we're going to get there i think we'll have enough going through the people that we've got going through the people yeah yeah and then all the little details as far as like here's where we're going to stay and you know the cost we'll be, and the plane rides and all that yeah we'll all be, be coming later tree trek which is a retreat center in panama in boquete panama um and i'll have the pricing i haven't gotten I haven't got quotes for that yet, so, um, but I'll I'll have that coming up soon. But it's it's going to be really, you know, for a seven day six night retreat in Panama, it's not going to be expensive comparatively to what you would expect to pay. So it's not not going to be terrible. Yeah. Um, oh, and people would have to have a passport, correct? Absolutely, must have a passport, and it has to have it. Putting that out now has to have over six months left on it because no airline will let you fly on a passport that has less than six months left to its ex expiration. So if your passport is going to expire that. within six months of your leave or return date, um, you, they will not let you fly on it. So you need to update your passport. Yeah. So guys, no y'all jump on that. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Um, I, I don't know what the COVID rules are right now, so I don't know if there's vaccination requirements there, but no other vaccinations are required um, okay. for flying, and you don't even have to get a visa if you're coming in from the U.S. I think you don't have to do it in Canada if you're Canadian either. Um, so, you know, no need to get a visa. You automatically walk in the door with a six-month visa as an American, so um, they don't require you to apply for it. Um, okay. But yeah. passport, yes, visa, passport, no. Passport, yes, visa, no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, all sorts of fun stuff, right? There and you just go. know that passports can take a while. They, you know, they typically Does take backlog. Three, three and four months <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to get your, or three and four weeks usually to get your passport. And there may be a backlog because they were backlogged for a while. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, now would be the time to renew your visa or your passport rather, um, if you aren't going to need it at that point. So there you go. Um, yeah. So fun, fun, fun till my daddy takes my T-bird away and I don't have one and he, he won't do it. So it's fine. So my dad's dead. He All can't right. take my T-bird away. No, he can't. <laughs> he can't. 
Not in this That'd lifetime. Be, that would be hard. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, yeah. It's all good. All right. Weird note well, to end the podcast on, but there we go. It's okay. Fuck it. It's fine. <laughs> Fuck it. It's fine. Fuck yeah. it. It's fine. Yeah. Join the join the Facebook group too. That that'll be announced there. It'll be announced in the Facebook group same time as the podcast. So, but the podcast is we 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 record it like a week and a half, two weeks in advance. So, uh, the Facebook group group will get it faster even if we do it at the same time. So, all right. Well, that's all that we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules, here with Kelly Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. Bye.